Let's see who we have next. Uh, that guy he, yesterday? He made it. <laughs> Can y'all hear me? Yeah, yes. what's up, buddy? What's up, okay, bro? hi, man. I, uh, you know, before y'all put me on here, I just wanted to, you know, Speak say louder, that, man. Uh, I can't hear you. Okay, I was saying before before y'all put me on here, the the Lord just gave it to me. You know, as soon as y'all got off um, that last chat, uh, I want to walk in the power that Peter did. You know, whenever they would see the shadow and all that, you know, mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, there was there would be people how he being healed. Five, 14 14. How how can we walk in that same power today? I, that's yeah. the first question, and then the second question would be, what is your disconnect with the Protestant way that made you you know go to that's, yeah. that, that's my only questions. Yeah, the Protestant, because I study church history. Study church history and see where you're going to land. Study the early church. Study the church for the first 300 years. Study the history. But coming to okay. your first question, you want shadow, your shadow fall on people and cast out demons? Well, so, I mean, I'm not saying it has to, but I mean, I want to be able to walk in the same power that, I, you know, the well, disciples did. And why do you assume that walking in the same power necessarily means you have to do the same kind of miracles? Uh, it's, yeah, you're you're totally right. I mean, that's it's not it's not necessary, but yeah. I just don't see it today. Yeah, I guess in the, you may you not know, see, it see it in the West. You may not see it in the West, but if you actually study the scriptures carefully, one sure sign of being filled with the Holy Spirit. You'll see this in the Book of Acts. Yes. One sure sign, and you'll see it, is that when the Spirit filled them, they were bold and fearless. And politically incorrect in proclaiming Christ and Amen. rebuking evil. That's the sign. In fact, here I'll show it to you. He's going to open up and show you on the screen. Acts 13, 6 to 12. Now notice the sign of boldness here. When they had gone through the whole island as far as Paphos, they came upon a certain magician, a Jewish false prophet named Bar Jesus. Like Muhammad, right? Yep. Bar hmm. Satan. He was with the proconsul Sergius Paulus. A man of intelligence who summoned Barnabas and saw and sought to hear the word of God. But Elymas, the magician, for that is the meaning of his name, opposed them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. But Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with filled, the Holy Spirit. Now notice what it is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Keep going. Looked intently at him and said, you son of the devil. You enemy of the... Where uh, is Jesus is this, in you, Paul? Is this you? Where is Jesus in you, Paul? Don't you know you can attract more flies with honey than with vinegar? <laughs> Why are you calling someone son of the devil, Paul? I don't see Jesus in you. Didn't you say in 2 Timothy 2.24? Yeah, these Bible perverts who think they know scripture. Go ahead. So filled with the Holy Spirit, he became bold. He became bold. He looked at Politically him incorrect. Him. Politically incorrect. Amen. In your face. In your face. Okay, keep going. Very straight up and uh, explicit. You son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, full of deceit and villainy. Will you not stop making crooked the straight paths of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you. You will be blind and unable to see the sun for a time. Yeah. Immediately mist and darkness fell upon him. And he went about seeking people to lead him by the hand. Then the proconsul believed when he saw what had occurred, for he was astonished at the teaching of the Lord. So one sure sign of being filled with the Holy Spirit is to be bold, fearless, politically incorrect. Yes. Preach the truth of Christ without fear of backlash. Condemn and rebuke false teachers and perverts like he did with that young girl. He just rebuked that demon outright. No fear. And here this false, no fear. Now look at it again. Peter, Acts 4, 5 to 14. On the next day, there were brothers and scribes gathered together in Jerusalem with Anas, the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. And when they had set them in the midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with the Holy Spirit. He knows there's backlash. Amen. They can imprison him and kill him. Filled with the Holy Spirit, look what he says to them in their face. Amen. Said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified. 
whom God raised from the dead, by him, this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. Amen. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name among heaven, uh, under heaven, uh, given among men by which we must be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Now watch what it says here. Now when okay. they saw the boldness. The boldness. Of Peter Amen. and John. And perceived that they were uneducated. Common men. They were astonished. By the way, the word common men in the Greek word is idioti. Where we get okay. the word idioti. Did you know that? Mm -mm. Yeah. So literally it says uneducated meaning they were not trained by the rabbis. And common <laughs> men means the Greek word is idioti. Meaning idiots. That's where you get the word idiot. Right. Yeah. So here's where they're astonished. Look where they're astonished. Man, not only are they bold, bold, fearless in our face, telling us what we did. Yes. But their knowledge is mind-blowing, though they're common folk, no formal education. So now, then, now here's the key. What is that key last line? And they recognized that they had been with Jesus. That's the key. Guys, you see it? Amen. This is one of the most beautiful passages of Scripture. You don't need seminary or college. Spend time with Jesus. Be at the feet of Jesus. Worship Jesus. Pray to Jesus. Sing to Jesus. And ask Jesus to help you understand. He'll give you wisdom to be bold and put scholars in their place. Glory to the Father, Son, and the Spirit. Now, what does it say about 14? But seeing the man who was healed standing beside them, they had nothing to say. In See, when in other words, the proof was in front of them. The man was paralyzed. He was miraculously healed. And they're seeing him, and they know they can't deny what they're saying because here's the proof. They healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. I hope that answers your question. So don't look just for miracles. Look for are you bold? Are uh, yes. you fearless? Yes. Are you uncompromising, unapologetic, and politically Hey, uh, by, by the way, Sam, uh, I was going to say, you know, they, they stuck me with three uh, Muslims, you know, over there at my job. And, you know, it's, cr it's crazy. That's the only people that work with me is just three Muslim guys. They, well, the guy they the, that's the, best, the owner, the, the owner of the business Muslim and two other guys that are his friends. They're, they work there with me. What I noticed is that they have a tradition of helping each other out. Right. And I wanted to add on. Are, do Should Christians be like in Acts uh, chapter 4, you know, where y'all were at in verse 32, where it says no, nothing belonged to themselves? You, you know what I mean? But then no, they, they had all things common and no man lacked because everybody gave uh, their possessions to the, you know, the apostles, there's, what they sold. There's a context to everything. You can't okay. take passages out of context, meaning if you are a persecuted Christian group, you're the minority. Uh -huh. And you have no one else but one another to depend on, then that yes. means you have to be willing to share all you have with your family in Christ because outsiders are not going to help you. The Roman government's not going to help you. They're going to kill you. The Jews are not going to help you because they think you're blasphemers. There's a context. In that first century context, the Christians were a persecuted minority. So if they didn't help each other, who would? Yes. Now, with that said, if you have financial stability, and Avery is starving, and he's about to be homeless. It is your duty to provide Amen. for him, as long as he's not a leech, because the <laughs> Bible says you're not to eat the bread of idleness. It's in the Bible, by the way. It says, he who does not work does not eat. First, uh, Second Thessalonians chapter 3, Second Thessalonians chapter 3, as the Spirit gives us perfect recall of the word, verses 6 to 14. And then in First Thessalonians 4, verses 11 to 12, and First Thessalonians 5, 14, we're told, that we have to work with our own hands. We can't eat the bread of idleness. He who does not work does not eat. And that if anyone does not obey this command, he is to be discarded. That's what Paul says. So you can't be naive. You can't be duped. You can't be a sucker that someone is a leech using you yes. because you're a Christian. But if someone is in need, you got to help them. Amen. And one last question. What is the name of God the Father? Look at God this dude. the Father. Look at this dude. God the Father. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, no. I'm just saying, like, what what is his name? Like, God like. The Father. I hope okay. You're not okay. a modalist heretic. Are you an anti-trinitarian? So okay. I well, well, well I, I, all I'm saying is, I just want to know, like, if is there a different name that God the Father has? God the Father. So okay. if you're a modalist heretic, remember, a sign of being filled with the Spirit is not to be a coward and hide behind a fake God. 
Well, well, you see, the way that you treat me already, like right now, I, that was what I was you're a deceiver of, and a conniver. You no, are, no, that's all I was getting on. I promise. I'm just asking okay, the question. So are you an anti-Trinitarian? Just say it. Don't be scared. I, it's not that I'm an anti. It's just that I'm I, So you I'm believe not, Jesus is the father? So why'd you waste no, my no, time? No, no, I don't believe that Jesus is the father. I just believe that he is one person. And like kind of like you're a father, okay, you're so a you son. Just said, no, no, yeah. So, buddy, so you are a son of the devil. Okay. If he is one person, that means Jesus is the father. Because if you are a father and you right. are a daughter and you're a dog, but you're the uh -huh. same person, right? Right. So you are a false Christian. You worship a false God. You're okay. a son of Satan. Your All right. God I, I didn't, exist. Exactly. And I, did, well, I just didn't want to and be on blast. Are you like laughing that. about it? I just said your God is Satan. I, 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 okay. No, I just didn't, I didn't want to be put on blast. That's the reason why well, I didn't well, want to come coward, on here with my face. The apostles were put on blast, but they knew the true God. They didn't back now, but you're a coward. You don't have their spirit. You have the spirit no, of Satan. No, no. no, it's not, it's not, that. It's not that. You're a son of the devil. I also That's didn't want to argue. Feel free to contact me, go Skype, so I can destroy your fake God and bring you to the feet of Jesus, whom you do not know. You are a son of the devil. You're a false oh. teacher. Your God is fake. And the Lord Jesus rebuke you and the demon that possesses you. All right, Sam. Thank you. Take care, buddy. Hey, what did Paul say to the false prophet Elimas?